Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Tuesday, February 2nd. And from a coronavirus update from Ohio Governor Mike DeWine to what plans are out there for a third stimulus check, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, today is Groundhog's Day. And what did we find out? Well, good old Puxatawney Phil saw his shadow predicting another six weeks of winter. And I know I could get canceled for saying this, but bring it on. I would love another six weeks of winter and another six inches of snow. Sue me. But Punxsutawney Phil is known to get it wrong here and there. So let's see what's really up ahead with our first alert weather team. And this is one of the few times in our 10 day forecast where I'll be able to say, it looks like a quiet stretch the next 48 hours or so. Partly sunny skies, a little bit of a cool breeze today. It is still the start of February, but the sunshine is nice. Clear skies tonight will allow temperatures to fall out there, but more sunshine likely on the way for tomorrow. This is ahead of our next system, which arrives on Thursday. And this one kind of primes the atmosphere. Look at this one and say, boy, that looks like one of the warmer days on the forecast, 38 degrees. But this cold front is kind of what opens the door, allows the colder air to arrive Friday. Big cold front comes through Saturday into Sunday. And then look at these high temperatures first alert days out there Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Daytime highs try and struggle to reach the double digits. Overnight lows will be either single digits above or below zero. That's pipe bursting cold. President Joe Biden and 10 Senate Republicans have offered competing proposals to help the United States respond to the coronavirus pandemic and provide aid to both businesses and families. So what are the differences between these two proposals? Well, let's take a quick look. The top line numbers are this. Biden's plan calls for an additional $1.9 trillion in federal spending, and the 10 GOP senators are calling for about $618 billion in federal spending. But the big questions are, how much will I be getting and do I qualify? Well, Biden's plan includes $1,400 for people making up to $75,000 a year, and after that, dollar amounts are phased out gradually, but the income cap is unknown at this point. The Republican proposal would provide $1,000 for those making up to $40,000 a year. After that, it will be phased out gradually, but with a cap at an income level of $50,000 per year. For couples, each plan is just doubled, essentially. When it comes to unemployment insurance, Biden wants a $400 per week benefit, a $100 increase from current law through September. His plan would also expand eligibility to include self-employed workers, such as rideshare drivers, who don't usually qualify for unemployment insurance benefits. The GOP plan also extends unemployment benefits, but at $300 per week through June 30th. Now let's take a look at state and local aid. Biden's framework would send $350 billion to state and local governments to prevent service cuts and keep police, fire, and other public sector workers on the job. However, Republican senators didn't include any direct relief to state and local governments in their proposal. Because of this addition to Biden's plan, more than 400 U.S. senators across party lines are calling on congressional leaders to adopt his relief proposal, including Finley's mayor, Christina Murren, Lima's David J. Berger, and Toledo's Wade Katsikavich. And what about schools? Biden proposes $170 billion for education. Most of that money would go to schools for students in kindergarten through 12th grade to offset expenses necessary to reopen safely. About $35 billion would target universities and community colleges. The plan from Republicans pitches $20 billion for schools serving students in kindergarten through 12th grade as part of an initiative to get students back into the classroom. Also in Biden's plan, though not directly related to the pandemic, is a gradual increase in the minimum wage to $15 per hour. Now, the Republican plan does not address the minimum wage, which is currently at $7.25. But there is one area in which both plans aligned, and that is with vaccines and testing. Both proposals provide $160 billion to boost vaccinations and COVID-19 testing, essentially allowing the country to launch vaccination centers, purchase more rapid tests, expand lab capacity, and buy personal protective equipment for first responders. But when will we have an official plan? When will we get our checks? Honestly, that is all up in the air right now. But Alec Phillips, chief U.S. political economist for Goldman Sachs, told CBS News the relief package could be passed in mid-February to mid-March. After the relief bill passes Congress, it must be signed by Biden. Then we would go through another round of payment distributions from the IRS, which 
past experience tells us can sometimes be delayed. So in a nutshell, CBS News analysts predict that if a package is passed in mid-February, we could start to see checks sometime at the end of the month. But if it's pushed back and delayed until the end of March, we probably won't see any checks until sometime in April. But if you want to read up more on the two competing proposals, I have a link in the description of this video right now. So check that out. The Biden administration will begin providing COVID-19 vaccines to U.S. pharmacies, which is part of its plan to ramp up vaccinations as new and potentially more serious virus strains are starting to appear. Starting next week, some 6,500 pharmacies will receive a total of 1 million doses of the vaccine. The number of participating pharmacies and the allocation of vaccines are expected to accelerate as production increases. The partnership with drug stores was originally announced by the Trump administration last November, but at that time, no coronavirus vaccines had been approved. And the Biden administration announced today that there will be an increase in the number of doses the government is shipping out to states territories, and major metropolitan areas. Those will now total 10.5 million doses across all jurisdictions, up from 10 million announced last week. And Ohio Governor Mike DeWine got his coronavirus vaccine today, along with wife Fran, who both now qualify, along with a slew of other Ohioans in the 70 years and older range. Also qualifying this week are school staff, and while locally Notre Dame Academy already has its vaccine process underway, no Northwest Ohio schools are listed to get the shot this week. And DeWine brought to light an issue impacting five Northeast Ohio nursing homes after vaccines that were distributed yesterday were discovered to have not been stored properly. Ohio Department of Health Chief Medical Officer Dr. Bruce Vanderhoff said that while no harm has been done, the individuals impacted will need to be revaccinated. This is really an issue about taking every step that we can to ensure that whenever a person gets a vaccine, they're getting a vaccine that will work. Uh, there, this is not an issue, though, of any known harm having been done. Vanderhoff also noted that not all doses distributed at these facilities Monday were compromised. The breached doses were distributed at the following facilities. Ashtabula County Residential Services Corporation, The Maples in Kingsville, Ashtabula Towers in Ashtabula, Heather Hill Care Communities in Chardon, Six Chimneys in East Cleveland, and Willow Park Convalescent Home in Cleveland. Vanderhoff said that Walgreens identified the storage issue through its quality control processes. Representatives immediately reached out to the CDC and the vaccines manufacturer to work toward next steps. So what comes next? Walgreens will work with the CDC and the affected nursing homes to determine which patients may need to be revaccinated. Once they are identified, both organizations will work to ensure these patients get their new vaccine at the right time. Patients don't need to do anything. They will be contacted if need be. But while we're at it, let's take a look at some of this data. Today, there were 3,657 new cases of coronavirus compared to the 21-day average of 5,228. 106 new coronavirus-related deaths compared to the 21-day average of 73, 221 new hospitalizations compared to 228, and 21 new ICU admissions compared to the 21-day average of 23. And the number of patients in our hospitals just keeps dropping. Today, there are 2,488 COVID-19 patients in hospitals across the state. As a reminder, if we stay below 3,000 patients for seven straight days, the state curfew could be moved to midnight. And if we're below 2,500 for seven straight days, the curfew could be eliminated. And the Lucas County Rec Center and the Lucas County Fairgrounds could both be soon used for vaccine distribution. Lucas County commissioners voted unanimously Tuesday to approve the measure. So the Toledo Lucas County Health Department will pay the county $12,000 per month to use both facilities through April 30th, and that contract could be extended if it needs to be. The two sites have been previously used for pop-up testing, and the agreement with the county allows the health department to move to vaccine distribution. And if you need to know how you can find a vaccine appointment in Northwest Ohio or Southeast Michigan, I'm just going to keep posting those links in the description of these videos, so it is there for those of you who need it. So as teachers in our area are working to make the decision on whether or not they want to get the coronavirus vaccine, community leaders are working to help educate them and answer any questions they might have. Tonight at 7 p.m., the V Project is hosting a science-based virtual town hall on its Facebook page. And Perrysburg Superintendent Tom Hostler says it's critically important for educators to get the facts. This is a campaign literally to save your life. Um, so I can't think of a more important campaign than to, to learn about how this may make a difference in my life 
and, and the impact that it can have on the students that we're all charged with. Again, that town hall kicks off at 7 p.m. tonight on the V Project Facebook page, and I have a link to all of that information in the description of this video. So check it out if you need it or share it with a teacher that you know. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.